Hello everyone, in today's tutorial, we will be simulating the transmission of data using quadrature amplitude modulation. To carry out the simulation, we will need two things, MATLAB code, which will act as a brain of our simulation, and a Simulink model, which will form the body of our system. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more in-depth tutorials on various topics in electrical engineering. Click the notification bell so you never miss an update. QAM is a modulation technique used in communication systems where both the amplitude of two carrier signals, one in phase and one quadrature, are valued in accordance with the data signal. This allows for the transmission of more bits per symbol. The more symbols we use, the higher the data rate, but this also increases the complexity of the system and the required signal-to-noise ratio for reliable communication. We start by generating random data. In Simulink, we use the random integer generator block to generate integers. These integers are then converted into bits using the integer to bit converter block. These bits will serve as an input for the QIM modulator. Next, we modulate the bits using the QIM or QAM modulator block. QAM modulation involves encoding multiple bits into a single symbol. We can use different orders of QAM, such as 4QAM, 16QAM, or 64QAM. The choice of a modulation order determines the number of symbols that will be used. The modulated data is then passed through a noisy channel represented by the AWGN channel block. The noise level in the channel is controlled by the signal-to-noise ratio, SNR, which will be adjusted during the simulation. A block named RA input is also connected to the AWGN channel, and it is updated using MATLAB code. The block represents the variance of the noise. To visualize the transmitted data, we use a constellation diagram block, which plots the data points in the complex plane, showing how the symbols cluster under different conditions. The received symbols are then demodulated using the QAM demodulator block, and we calculate the bit error rate, BER, using the error rate calculation block. This will allow us to evaluate the performance of the communication system under different conditions. Now let's go over the MATLAB code that controls the simulation. The code begins by opening the Simulink model. We also define the parameters for the simulation, including a list of SNR values, which will be used to control the noise level, the size of the QAM symbol set M, which can take values like 4, 16, and 64, corresponding to 4 QAM, 16 QAM, and 64 QAM, the number of data bits to be transmitted, which is variable, a memory allocation for storing the BR values across different SNR levels. The MATLAB code contains two main loops. The first loop handles the variation of M, the number of QAM symbols. For each M value, 4, 16, or 64, we adjust the number of bits per symbol, K, which is the logarithm base 2 of M. The second loop varies the SNR values and calculates the corresponding noise variance. The setParam function updates the Simulink model with the new values of M, the noise variance, and the data size. Once the parameters are updated, the simulation runs, and the output is captured. The BR is calculated at each iteration, and we plot the results. When the simulation is launched, it runs for each value of M, 4, 16, and 64 gram. Initially, the constellation diagram will show the points scratch red due to high noise. As the simulation progresses, the points start to cluster around the vertical positions as the noise level decreases. This behavior is observed for each gram modulation order. The final output includes a plot showing the BER as a function of SNR for each QAM modulation order. This plot is a common way to evaluate the performance of a communication system. The curve should show that as the SNR increases, the error rate decreases, which is in line with theoretical expectation. This simulation demonstrates the transmission of data using QAM modulation and evaluates its performance in a node channel. By varying the modulation order M, and the SNR, we can observe how the system's error rate changes and compare the results to theoretical predictions. Thank you for following this tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial and would like to see more content on electrical engineering and digital communication, make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you won't miss our future tutorials.